Of course, the big story, however, that is certainly going to be consuming the weekend with regard to news that, of course, is the ANC going to its national conference today. The party is grappling with more problems than any other time in its history. Issues of mass corruption, grave divisions, not only in the broader party, but within some provinces and regions, dwindling number of voters and a loss of its grip in the country. Gauteng ANC Chair Panyazala Sufi, giving his political report yesterday, said the ANC enters the conference with artificial unity. An NEC that has presided over the losses of six of the country's eight metros and an NEC that has, witnesses, uh, that has witnessed but done nothing about the dwindling votes. Meanwhile, NEC member uh, Dakota Lejuete told the media recently that the ANC goes to conference with its two lead candidates having a cloud of alleged corruption hanging over their heads while vying for the highest position of the ANC presidency. Now, the political analyst that we're going to be speaking to is Professor Setulejo Matabesi, who, of course, is a senior lecturer at the University of the Free State. Great to have you, Prof. Thank you very, very much for being our guest on the programme. Hi, good morning, Leanne, and good morning to the viewers at home. Gosh, just that introduction gives us a sense of what the party is going into. I mean, there is, and, and that's nothing, because there is so much more that is currently brewing under this conference and uh, certainly what is brewing un, in the ranks within the ANC. I mean, what is your view or review of the state of the ANC as it goes into conference? Well, it has been Polokwani, it has been Mangahung, and here we find us again at Nasrek 2022. Uh, we all know the ANC goes into this conference almost similar to what we experienced during the previous 2017 uh, elective conference, uh, where we all know the so-called Jacob Zuma faction where trying to see one of their own being elected. Uh, that did not happen. But currently, the ANC enters this conference on the back of many problems that is facing South Africa. And the ordinary South Africans are only focusing on the nominations, the elections of leaders. But it is a very significant conference because it's a conference that also has to come up with resolutions that will deal with many of the challenges, unemployment, the energy crisis in this country, but also a highly divided African National Congress. And one question is, will they emerge? Uh, being united after this conference. And those are some of the issues that I think will uh, uh, determine how sincere the ANC is about dealing with the many battles that our South Africans are facing. Mm. I mean, uh, the word we used and we, we heard the Gauteng ANC Chair Panyaza Lasufi using was artificial unity. They go into the conference with artificial unity. I mean, and, and the fact that there is a cloud hanging over its head and then many clouds when you come to think of it. I mean, this is again just talking to what Panyaza Lasufi has said, but I mean, he's just stating the obvious, um, yeah. you know, basically yeah. saying that the organization doesn't have a secretary general, NEC member, Dakota, the other day told one of the news channels that both its leading candidates who are targeting the highest positions in the ANC are, are, are tainted or have these, these alleged tainted corruptions hanging over their heads. Can one say that this is possibly one of the worst times for the ANC by comparison? I have seen, I mean, we had in Kanza, we now had Palafala, you can mention them, but I think this is the worst uh, that the ANC have faced. And I know there are ardent members of the African National Congress, and I think they can also confess that this is really the first that they're experiencing this. Because once you've got serious allegations, such serious allegations and charges against what I will call the engine of the organizations, and believe me or not, uh, I mean, and it's publicly known, the African National Congress does not compare to any other organization in terms of their organizational footprint, uh, uh, electoral support, and, and you can mention them, uh, and in terms of their history. But for the very first time, the ANC enters an elective conference without key 
people being in, 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 in certain positions and also having a suspended secretary general. These are huge factors which from on a daily basis there's huge reputational damage, uh, causes huge reputational damage for the for the organization. And uh, Leanne and the viewers each day from the 1st of January 2023 will determine how sincere the African National Congress is about arresting what has been happening over the past two decades within this uh, glorious organization, because that will determine whether their electoral machinery will be able to withstand uh, what I strongly believe that will be almost like a united opposition. We saw the opposition parties in South Africa uh, was a moment where they disintegrated, but I strongly believe that going forward, uh, there might just be some cooperation with the opposition party to try and unseat the African National Congress, and they need to come up with a strategy. And this is an opportunity, but unfortunately, uh, this conference will not provide that opportunity because many people are battling for their own agendas, and unfortunately, uh, it's the interest of the organization and ordinary South Africans is not a priority. Yeah, I mean, let's let's just look at the at the president for a moment, and and the, and the president of the ANC. He came in on this uh, this anti-corruption card, this card basically saying it's going to be renewal. We're going to give the image of South Africa and the party a brand new look, and you know we, we're going to clean up. Now he goes in with so much hanging over him. I mean, whether we talk about the Section eighty nine taking it on review, going into court, having a lot of a lot of pending charges hanging against him. I mean, these are these are allegations. Obviously, they still need to go before a court. But I mean, what is the future of Ramaphosa in this in this uh, in the party? And do you think we're going to have any surprises when it comes to his leadership being threatened, or is it almost what we saw taking place in Parliament that that that's what we can expect that he's going to he's going to go through smoothly? Well, what are your views on the future of Ramaphosa? A very good question, uh, Leanne. For me, it's definitely not going to go smoothly. Uh, it, it can't go smoothly. And, 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 and unfortunately now, South Africans are being held to ransom by state organizations, which seems as if they have gone on hibernation into a deep slumber. I mean, you've got a South African police services that has a case opened, a South African revenue services and all that, uh, the Reserve Bank. Uh, and, and if any one of those lay charges against the president, then it is goodbye for him. Uh, or at least in terms of the step aside the rule of the African National Congress, you will immediately become uh, suspended. And that for me will once again linger around the leadership of President uh, Ramaphosa. We've seen how cautious he was to deal with very fundamental issues, and I don't know why was he cautious, and I strongly believe that coming in, uh, that is what is going to, to, to happen uh, when it comes to uh, the, the presidency going forward. The very first, uh, if he does win over the weekend, will be Mangawung, uh, the January 8th statement, and I will not be surprised if they are set of the African National Congress that will boo him yeah, in, in, in the free state. Mm. But it is going to be a slippery slope for uh, Ramaphosa going forward. Yeah, I, I mean, any surprises that we should expect? Obviously, we know that the, the other contender is Zwelia Mkhize. We know this. That is, that, that is there, um, having KwaZulu-Natal on his side. Nominations from the floor? I mean, you know, these are, these are things that we've, we, I suppose, are, are looking out for, massive things we're looking out for this weekend. Yeah, well, I mean, that is a strategy. Sometimes nominations from the floor is also a strategy to try and disrupt, uh, confuse the opposition. Uh, well, there might be one nomination, and I expect back perhaps uh, Dr. Nkosa Zanazuma, but she has been doing all the wrong things from the word go. This is not how you deal with internal organizational issues where you try to show that you are now a macho celebrity. She should have dealt with this. I've got great respect for her, but I strongly believe that 
uh, even if many South Africans have issues with the African National Congress, she still belongs to the organization, and this is definitely not uh, how she should have conducted. She will, if, if she does get nominated, I don't think that she will go to the second round. It will just end there at nomination stage. Mm. I, I want to look at the top six now because that's also one of the the, the things that we should we should be seeing uh, coming through tomorrow. I mean, we've seen the list of nominations for the top six, and you know we talk president, national chairperson, the secretary general, deputy president, treasurer, and the deputy secretary general. So we've got the names that are there, but I mean. What, what are your views on this top six? And of course, we've also seen a lot of battles happening, but that's a, that, that we'll talk to that in, uh, after this in, within courts and for, uh, that for the NEC. But the top six right now, your views on those nominations? Yeah, well, I will come in from the side of, of how Deng. What was very interesting, we all know during the early stages uh, of the nominations, Paul Mashatile was mentioned. Uh, by KwaZulu Natal as being part of them. And, and, and I think he treaded very cautiously not to make any public pronouncement about that. What he just said was that I will abide with what uh, uh, the ANC members when I'm nominated. And, and I think that is very crucial because what he then did was to try and play it out, figure, figure you know, put out feelers to see where the, the, the balance of forces is, is, is lying. And, and, and I strongly believe that uh, he will be elected, uh, um, uh, uh, Paul Mashatile, but and you've got a Fikile Mbalula. We all know some issues around the transport uh, uh, ministry and Obomasina and, and, and stuff. But also, very importantly, you've only got two female nominees, uh, and, and, and that is for Deputy uh, uh, Secretary General. And at least I foresee a situation where at least one of them will be nominated. I've already seen some pronouncement from the Women's League that they will ensure that uh, there is. For 50% representation, but I don't know how are they going to achieve that with this kind of nominations. Yeah, I mean, as I'm as I'm sitting here, I just see a, a story coming through, and it's a it's a News 24 exclusive it's talking about that uh, um, the 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 one nomination for treasurer, and of course that's that's uh, Benjamin uh, Be Benji Chauke, and I mean this we know is a very very close. Uh, comrade, basically, and working with the president. And I mean, just just one of the, 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 the allegations dropped in this particular article is saying a company owned by uh, uh, Bejani Chauke, a presidential advisor and candidate to become the treasurer, pocketed millions from the CR17 campaign in 2016 and 17, earning close on 16.2 million rand. That's just one of the, the, uh, the things. I, I just also uh, the things from Palapala, a couple of things also just saying you know lots of things again this is this is somebody who is tainted i mean if we look at something like this and going for the position of treasurer but a very strong very strong supporter and uh, person next to ramaphosa uh leon we often talk like this as if it's a national sports uh, I've lost complete confidence in 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 in, in, in our leadership because and, and this, it, it's almost a nice to have thing where somebody comes and say, no, but I don't know the business, uh, you know, of my daughter or of my son. And it's these kinds of things that I think goes undetected. It's unacceptable if you've got situations like this. I strongly believe that a case should have been opened, those who've got any evidence against this, and people like this should not stand for the leadership of the African National Congress, because at the end of the day, all the fall that we see in the street, refuse that is not collected, bridges collapsing, lack of planning, happens because you've got people whose eyes are only geared to prioritize projects that will ensure that their pockets are filled. If you've got such a tainted top six, the problem is what will change them? A leopard does not change its spots overnight. Mm. Uh, 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 and, and this is the same thing that is going to for almost like a vicious cycle of changing one corrupt uh, member uh, with, with leader with, 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 with another. And I do believe that the ANC does have capable leaders and voices of reason, but the question is when are they going to rise? And, and, and I don't say with a protest and all that, uh, 
but within the organization to take this organization forward. But going forward, issues of corruption will continue in various corners of South Africa because uh, your top, it's also taunt, you've got top leaders tainted, then I can't see how these things will, uh, will suddenly uh, change overnight. All right, we leave it there. Political analyst Professor Setelejo Matabesi, thank you very much for talking to us. Senior lecturer at the University of the Free State discussing the ANC's challenges as the party goes into its national conference today.